a nice picture to look at, but I'm not sure what I'm looking at with this image. That's my only issue. It's a, ni it's a nice photo, it's, it's framed well. As a street photo, it's not really um, working hard enough for me. I don't know about this image. I mean, I know what they're going for. You can't knock a shot like this. This is a great shot. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm here with Tarek from O oh Brother Creative. Hello Tarek, thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. So the idea behind this is that I'm going to show you photos of our community of uh, photographers who submitted for about photography challenge. And I would like you to look at those photos as if they were your own and, you know, critique them as if they were your own or maybe one of your clients. So if you can give us your best opinion. Sure, I'll be happy to do that. No problem at all. Let's take a look at the first one. Okie dokie. This picture is, it's a, it's a beautiful picture. I mean, it's pleasing to, to look at straight away. It kind of captures, I mean, sunset, sunsets are always going to be something nice to look at. If it was my image, I kind of, I would have liked to have had, because it looks like the boy's flying a kite. I'm assuming that's what's happening. Yeah, probably. I would, have, I would have liked to have probably seen the string of the kite. I mean, it's a subjective thing and that's, that's the thing with this sort of stuff because somebody might like it because it looks like there's a bit of mystery behind it with it just an object flying in the sky. But I think I would have liked a bit of context with just a bit of the string showing, which is difficult. It's a thin wire and you're far away. And I mean, maybe on the right hand side of the picture where it looks like you've got a little bit of telephone cable or something like that. Mm. I mean, I might have been tempted to just retouch that out if I mean, if that's a done thing or not. But I personally would have just cloned that out. So it feels like there's a little bit more symmetry in the image. It would have, for me, it would have kind of framed, framed your image from each side and just had the object in the middle. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a nice picture. I would have been pleased with that. Maybe, maybe crop it a little bit in to, to get rid of the, of the wires. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have, cro I would have, if I was going to crop anything, it would just literally be that black block on the right hand side. I would have just bought in a little bit, but mm. the two, the two loose wires, I would have just retouched them out personally. Okay. I wouldn't have had a I wouldn't have had a problem. I wouldn't have felt like I was cheating if I just retouched that because if you cropped in any more to take in those cables as well, I feel like the image would have lost its it's it would have lost the framing. I think it just would have all punched in too much. And if you wanted it to look like that, then it should have been shot even closer to show more detail. Maybe a little bit of light wrap around on the boy or something like that just to give it. I mean, that's how I would have liked it. So I feel like if it's gone wide and you want that framing of the the houses it needs to show the rooftops to give it context for me and as for the edit would you maybe consider making it all black you know leaving all the shadows because we can still see the part of the building right but in the exposure tab you can basically make it all disappear to just make black silhouette mm. would you go for it or do you like uh, the details no no I, yeah i think i think the person that said it this has done has been sympathetic to the shadows and i think I would have probably done it like this as well because I feel like it's a bit sometimes could be an easy way out to just make all your silhouettes black. Mm. But if you if you get it right, like there's a little reflection off the window on the right and a little reflection on the what looks like a door on the left. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me it's just giving it some texture and it's giving it a little bit of shape and it's giving it depth as well. The moment you lose those those layers of 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 reflections and and light, I feel like it flattens the image down. So Actually, I quite like what they've done here where they've left a little bit of reflection on the window on the right and the door on the left. I think it works quite well. I mean, you can even on my screen at the minute, you can see slight texture in the shadows at the bottom. I mean, I can live with that. I think it works. All right. Moving on to the next one. I mean, the framing, I mean, it's a nice picture to look at, but I'm not sure what I'm looking at with this image. That's my only issue. I mean, I kind of wish there was maybe a fisherman on the boat behind or somebody diving off the pier in the background or two people sitting on the blue chairs. But outside of that, I mean, it's just, I don't know what's going on. So I'm looking around the picture and it's, it's a nice, there's, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm meant to be looking at. It's not really doing it for me too much it's not a bad picture maybe if it was if this <clears throat> picture was in a set of images so mm. somebody i mean i don't know where <clears throat> where this picture's been taken exactly but if it wherever they've traveled to if there was a set of images and you're building up a story mm -hmm. so this might be i mean i would have enjoyed to see it to kind of give me different aspects of perhaps a fisherman or something if he's by the yeah, water maybe following this guy more and then this would be just a picture of him which we would yeah. already know about right yeah exactly that i think as a documentary picture it works because 
I mean, they've shot this at probably, I don't know, like F11 or higher. It's got mm. so much depth in it. It's not, is my eye doesn't know what it's meant to be looking at. I mean, if it was isolated and you went, oh, okay, they've shot this at F4 or F2.8 and it's just isolated the subjects on the right. And so I know that that's what I'm meant to be looking at because there's something like, I mean, it's always beautiful to look at hands and stuff like that. But this guy's hand, for instance, isn't telling me enough of a story for it to be mm. really appreciated. So, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not a bad picture, but it's just not working hard enough, I don't think. Moving that on was... to the next one. Yeah, this is cool, isn't it? I mean, it's the sort of picture that you kind of want in your own set of photos. So I think this is great. I mean, I don't I don't love the edit on it, but that's subjective and mm -hmm. personal. So that doesn't make it a, a, a good or bad picture. If it was my picture, I would have edited it slightly differently. You mean the colors? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what I mean. I feel like it's not um, punchy enough, but that's just my subjective opinion so it doesn't it doesn't make it a, a like it's a brilliant picture mm. um i mean to, to be able to time it if that was just timed kind of intentionally i think the, the photographer is whoever took this picture is um kind of clever street photographer that knows what he's kind of looking at looking for when he's going for his images um yeah i think that's a really smart image i mean you know if i had to go oh to make it like excel even even above I mean, if the boy had something in his hand, he was carrying something, then I mean, it would have just, it would have elevated it to even more. But I mean, it's already there. It's already an image that I'd go, yeah, brilliant street photography. Um, <laughs> so yeah, hats off to whoever captures this, beautiful. Moving on to the next one. I mean, it's, um, it's I like this, I like this picture. Um, the edit's pretty nice as well, but I don't know what the photographer wants us to look at with this. The layers, the, the, I can see they're going for some layers. They're, the focus is on the back, but the eye contact is with the guy on the left. So for me, I mean, I probably would have wanted more in focus or the guy on the left in focus if it's mm -hmm. one of those pictures where he's caught him by surprise. In an image like this, I, I kind of wish that the guy wasn't wearing a mask because it just gives us a little bit more element of seeing his expression. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, masks in pictures, I mean, they're in a lot of street photography pictures and whether people have got an opinion as to if they spoil pictures or not. I mean, what do you think do that. about that? I don't like masks on image. Like, I mean, I think it's made street photography a little bit more tricky, mm. but I don't think it's made it impossible. I mean, it gives us an element of time. Like we mm. all know when we look at the, the images are going to be less timeless, I think, with the masks mm. because you're going to know that they were taken at some point between 2019 and, you know, 2022 perhaps. But So it doesn't trouble me too much. But a, if you can nail a street photo and people have got masks on and you still feel connection to it because there's the right amount of eye contact and the right amount of layers, then you know you've done a really good job. Mm -hmm. um, so, But with this image, I mean, I like it. I just wish that he was in focus or because he's quite soft like in focus or not because at the minute the only thing that's catching my eye is that girl's arm in the background that's like the wearing the fluffy jumper yeah, yeah i yeah. mean she's the highlight in the image i mean when you're looking at a black and white photo and you're looking at the highlight the highlight should be the be the, the most interesting part of the image that's what's being highlighted in the photo and at the minute there's just some steam and a hand but i don't know what a hand is doing it's nearly there but I just feel like if this person waited out of this spot a bit longer, mm -hmm. I feel like maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I mean, um, that if it was me, I would I would have waited out and seen if I could have got perhaps somebody walking out of that entrance on the right. So I've kind of got a face on the right hand side facing the left, then have somebody from the left. So they'd be the frames of the images and then something in the middle. So I'm kind of framing up with people on either side of the image. And then that subject in the middle, which is the highlight, that would that would be what I'd be hoping to get from this image. Because there's obviously a stream of light coming from the left hand side because it's mm. hitting it's hitting the wood. Yeah, so yeah. whoever walks, so the people on the right hand side, like the lady and the young girl, the backs of their heads are being lit. But if somebody was walking in the opposite direction, there would have been a beautiful bit of light on their face. So that would have been a nice nudge towards looking at that part of the image. Mm, yeah, maybe that's the nature of the of the queue or of the line, how people were moving. So maybe uh, it was not possible. But yeah, definitely mm. catching someone coming from the other side would uh, make him lit much better than this, right? Yeah, yeah, right. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this one. It's a not. It's a nice photo. It's it's framed well as a street photo. I mean, it doesn't. It's not really um, working hard enough for me. I feel like I would have wanted someone in that right, uh, left-hand side of the of the image. So you've got the two girls on the right, mm -hmm. and I would have liked somebody, you know, right in front of me eating ice cream. 
or something like that and shooting past them to give them context because yeah. this could just be a family photo like that could just be my you know my girlfriend and her friend sort of thing on a, on a ride so it's framed well i mean like there's an element of symmetry with the um the blue object on the right and the blue object on the left they're kind of cropped fairly um symmetrically so that works but there's not a whole load more going on in this photo apart from two people mm. having fun so i mean as a documentary photo it works well again and if it was a, if this was a sequence because you're story building then this photo is a nice photo but in terms of it being a standalone street photo i'm not sure i think it's just missing i think it's just missing that thing that one thing mm. that makes it feel a considered street photo my first thought was uh when i saw this i thought like maybe the photographer could tilt the camera a little more up to get rid of the negative space at the bottom and include the top of the top of the thing uh, yeah. not to not not to crop it but i don't know if it would mess the whole composition of the of the rest of the things which are kind of overlapping uh, yeah. the arms yeah, but, yeah, yeah. the composition i mean the composition's nice and it's a pleasing it's a pleasing image to look at mm. so it's not a bad photo it's pleasing to look at and i think there's such a fine line between an image that's pleasing but an image just, that's a strong street photo. And I think this is a pleasing image and it's nice to look at. And I mean, you know, if you were in a fish and chip shop by the, by the seaside, this would be the sort of image that would look great on the wall. Mm. So it's a pleasing, it's a good image. So whoever took this image, I don't want to think that they didn't take a good image. It is a good image, but is it working um, enough for a street photo? I don't think it is. Perfect. Thank you. No worries. Let's take a look at this one. Um, I don't know about this image. I mean, I know what they're going for. There's, I mean, I'm guilty of it, so I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't, but take, taking the street photo that's got other people's work or art in it, mm. sometimes I feel like it's a bit of a cheap shot. And I'm not saying this person is a, a cheater. I've done this. I've got photos in my own set that turned out to be a graffiti artist that, you know, connected with me saying oh hey i've seen your street photo and it's got one of my bits of work in it and i was like oh great i mean i feel like it really works with the image that i was taking hmm. um i get why people do it but if you're gonna do it i feel like it has to have um context like the photo has to I mean, whatever the piece of art is it needs to be brought into the image as part of the layering of the image i mean you know i'm just making this up for instance but somebody might be holding up a sandwich while they're sorting something out and then the picture behind them might be like a dog in a picture for an advert for dog food or something and it might just line up with the dog biting the sandwich i mean that works because you're bringing in the layers of the background but i mean this isn't really doing much in that sense so i kind of feel like the silhouette should have just been in front of the archway in order to create like a silhouette frame with, with the archway. Mm. I hopefully, hopefully that makes sense the way I'm explaining <laughs> it. I, um, I just feel like it's not doing anything apart from the picture in the background. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about this one, unfortunately. Let's take a look at the next one. It's missing something. And I think what it's missing for me is the person being right in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, in order for me to really appreciate what's going on here, I feel like they should have got close up to see the people's faces on the on the ground or even to have for gone the cost of losing the church the yeah, top of the church i don't think you need the church because you've got that cross on the right so mm -hmm. if i feel like if you came in like if i mean if you want the church then you're taking a landscape photo but if this is meant to be telling me like a like a, a storytelling street photo mm -hmm. I, I feel like they needed to have got got in there to show more of what's going on i mean If it, like Eva, I would have wanted to get round into the crowd and get on my knees and take the photo to give me the essence of like, I want to see the perspective of what people are seeing. Oh, okay. So I would, so I probably would have come around the other side and photographed the priest. I mean, what's he got in his hands? I don't know Through anything. Through the people. Through the people. I would have used the people of, as layers of frames, trying to get some of the rosary beads. I would have just spent, you know, 15 minutes just moving around that crowd to see if I could get the picture I wanted to nice and low to just get that expect like what are those people seeing? I mean, I even want to see what the people are seeing or I want to see what the priest is seeing. But at the minute, I'm only seeing what a passerby is seeing, mm -hmm. which anybody can see that. I mean, there's probably hundreds of people walking past this spot. So mm -hmm. you've taken a documentary picture here. You've just documented people in a frame. So for me, I would have said, I would have wanted to get right in there, you know, got around the other side, shooting past somebody's hands while they're holding the rosary beads. And then you've got the priest's face in the background, like just something to just build up some some layers and 
telling me a bit of a story that something's going on. I mean, I still don't know. Like, I don't know what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And if you went around the other side and got in there in the mix, you still might not have known what's going on. But I feel like it would have made a more interesting image. And it would have felt like I was there, really there, rather than just passing by and uh, okay. looking over and then carrying. I want to feel like I'm actually in there. Okay, so that's interesting. That that's interesting yeah. advice. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Next one. Uh, I mean, I would have wanted somebody on the bike. That would have been my thing. It's a nicely framed picture. I mean, I love the colors. I like that they've got the tag on the right-hand side. They've managed to keep that. It's all beautifully square and symmetrical. I, prob I probably would have ha rather not had the bike in it. Mm-hmm with this picture because I feel like the bike isn't really I mean it's the pop of color which is cool I mean it's a nice to have a little pop of color but I feel like I'm enjoying the the symmetry of the building like the flats I think they are I'm enjoying that more so I feel like the bike I don't need the bike there but if I was going to have the bike there I feel like I would have wanted somebody on the bike cycling past and even I mean even more so if they turned and looked at the camera if he lined it up perfectly with that door I mean, it's difficult and you've got to wait it out, I think. But an image like this needs patience, which, I mean, I, you know, I say that I'm not a very patient street photographer. <laughs> it's one of my downfalls. I just move quickly. I've had my headphones on and I just walk around like constantly. And I, sometimes I wait out a spot, but I mean, some street photographers wait two hours at the same spot until they get the image they want. Whereas I'm like, five are minutes, you more like hopefully. run and gun? Not run and gun. Uh, I mean, run and gun. I shoot like a, quickly because, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I don't spray and pray. Okay. I don't just photograph and hope that it all works out. I'm considered, but because I mostly want people in my pictures, mm. I shoot quickly so that, and I shoot close as well. So I have, I have to like move in, take a picture, then move out again before people have got a chance to grab my arm and ask me what I'm up to. So <laughs> I think. Um, I've got used to shooting quickly because I've liked my documentary background and just trying not to distract people. But a picture like this, I mean, it's good, but it's, I just wish the person taking it just waited it out a little bit longer. I mean, 15 minutes at this spot and they would have had, sorry, they would have had some great options with like moments that they could have captured. Yeah. yeah. But it's, a, ni just, it's a nice thing. Yeah. Maybe just waiting for the postman to come back, right? Because... Yeah. If this is like a postcard, he probably went uh, to right, deliver right, okay. something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, and I can see it. Yeah. I don't know what country that's taken, though, mind you. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. But it's a not, I mean, the person that took this picture should, if they're, if they live in the country and they're able to go back to this spot, I think they should go back to this spot and they should get this picture and, and, and work it, like work this spot and try and get the best image they can because it's a really nice find and you don't, it's not, every day that you walk past a wall like this and go, look at that. I mean, it's a nice, I think they can work with Spot and get some nice options from it. Okay. So let's take a look at this one, this time with a person on a bike. This is a cool picture. This is cool. I mean, this is, this is a brilliant picture and they're experimenting and they're working a space. Yeah. I mean, I love this picture. Whether, I mean, this is one of those photos that some people might go, I mean, street photography, the thing I love about mm. it is that it's there's a, such a spectrum of what's classed as street photo. Like this person, if, if their style is all this sort of thing and they've got a consistent portfolio of work or gallery of work that looks like this, then I think they are onto something. Mm. Like they should, they've done this really well. I never take images like this and I see them and go, oh yeah, I mean, that's cool, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it, really, it really sticks out. And it's just a cool picture to look at. You could have that on your wall, screensaver. I mean, I like it. It's great. Yeah, yeah really it nice. It makes photo. you wonder how it was taken, if it was shot from like a train or from a car, or if it was, was just like a simple panning shot with a maybe like a moving background or something. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, they, if the, the person's fairly in focus, it look, to me it looks like they've shot it really low shutter speed. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they've panned with the bike because the floors are really blurry, like the, the pavement and curb and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. So for me, I mean, there's a little bit of his belt or waistline is kind of fairly in focus. So perhaps they've they've panned with it to me, but it's nice. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really nice shot. All right. Moving on to yeah. the next one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is cool, isn't it? I mean, you can't, you can't kind of knock a shot like this. This is a great... This is a great shot. I mean, if the guy on the right was maybe a tiny bit higher and I could see all of mm. his head, I feel like that's a bit too obvious. 
maybe mm -hmm. direct so i actually quite like how it's just got half his head i think it actually works a bit more for me it adds that little element of like mystery to it i suppose from a design yeah. perspective would you like to have something in the sky maybe like more clouds yeah. or, or birds or something I, do you know i was thinking that yeah i mean it could have had some birds there the negative space works i mean if this was a commercial if this was shot for a commercial commercial use i mean you've got loads of negative space there for a mm. copy to go on top of so it works it works really well um i mean i maybe would have cropped in ever so slightly to get rid of that half a disc on the okay. right hand side i mean it's kind of it's not in it's not out so i kind of just think you could have just got rid of that maybe it, it's not in the picture enough to to frame to, mm. to create any kind of framing so i maybe i don't know actually maybe it is helping it a little bit because it's creating a little bit mm. of a frame it's creating a little bit of a like a separate little frame for the head on the right so i don't know it's a bit it doesn't bother me that much actually <laughs> i mean yeah because i feel like i would have if i was editing this picture i might have cropped it in and cropped it out and it would have taken a bit of me a bit of time to decide but it works i think it's a nice picture it's cool all right but yeah yeah cool picture all right moving on yeah i mean this is a cool picture this would work really well in a set of images mm. i hope the person that photographed this image has got a set has gone out and said i'm going to document this market and get lots of different faces and different people because um i can imagine this image sitting in a body of 10 images from this day but it's cool i mean there's there's a nice bit of, i like the light that's coming down on the right hand side actually i mean i know it's behind him or maybe to like behind him ish not totally behind him but i quite like the light that's going on i mean it makes his belly look really big but like not in a bad way not in an insulting way but it just mm. like that body that body shape it's just make it's helping that what's going on and i mean the finger in the background pointing at his mask i mean if he didn't have his mask on then it would look like his finger was yeah. going up his nose that might have been funnier but if you're into that sort of street photo um but yeah i mean i like it it's not like it's not um groundbreaking street photo but because i mean like the framing, like the guy with the checkered shirt on the left, I kind of wish he was more, so he wasn't breaking the shape of the, the guy, like the, the the subject of the image. In a way, to be honest with you, I think, I wonder if I would have preferred it if the arm pointing up at the face wasn't there. If actually just isolated this image, it looks a little bit like just a odd candid portrait. Like the buildings do a really good job of framing, like they've got leading lines mm. down to the subject in the middle. He shot it quite shallow, so you've got, nice drop off on the background it's it's a bit i quite like that you know there's a guy on the right pulling a bag and he's got like a shell suit so it looks like i don't know I, I, I do like it but actually i don't know if if i like the man pointing up at the face actually i'm not sure if, if it's adding to the picture or actually making it more distracting for me to just enjoy this this guy with his hat caught in the middle there like was he i don't really know what he's waiting for no it's giving me some questions to think about while i'm looking at this picture like, has he got his friend or his wife or something waiting there or is something mm. crossing the road or is he, or was he just standing there like in his own world for a few minutes and then you've just kind of, you know, this person was walking down through the market and thought there's a guy standing right in front of me and I'll just take his picture before I move around him sort of thing. So I think that's what, I like the edit on this as well, actually. All right. So I'm 50-50 with this one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So moving on to the more slightly artistic one, I would say maybe mm. more abstract one. Yeah. I mean, this is this is really nice as well. This is a little bit like um, that guy on a bicycle. Like mm. it's very creative and abstract, and it's hard to it's hard to take photos like this because I think sometimes people look at this and go, "I had nothing else to photograph, so I just started shooting abstract stuff." You know, just manual focused, mm. out of focus stuff. But there's there's a lot going on in this picture, and I think it's I think it's a really nice photo actually. I like that there's all the scratch you can see all the scratches on the screen. I like these two bits of I don't know what they are even like tape or metal hmm. or something. But they're doing such a nice job of like making sure you look in the middle of the picture and you can see that there's that girl. I think it's a girl in the background. Hmm. Yeah. Like that, I think the the black lines is just doing such a good job of keep making sure you look at that, and you don't need to see her eyes looking at you you don't need to see that much detail but you can see enough that she's there so i really like this picture would you like to see different subject in the frame maybe like on the left side maybe someone walking or do you think this is like enough i think so i mean i was thinking about that just now because there's a lot of white that's almost i don't think it's blown out but it could mm. be blown out on the left so there's some blown out stuff but but i, but I think there's enough there's enough dark um elements on the right top right hand side of this image that's creating like a gradient down to the bottom left of the image so for me it's working really well was just kind of it's leading my eye depth like 
I started looking at the bottom left and it's just my eyes naturally gone from the high to the dark part of the picture. And there's enough like the middle of the image there mm. where the, the blue is kind of a little bit light. There's a bit of green and gray in it and then it leads up and you've got the red dot behind or it must be a car in the background or something like that. There's enough of a flow in this image that it leads me to look at her face. And I think the fact that she's got a really nice bit of light on the right hand side of her face, mm -hmm. it's, it's good portrait light really. So for me, you can see enough. That's what's giving this element of shape on her face. I really like it. I mean, I'd have that on my wall. No problem at all. Yeah, it's a lovely picture. All right. Let's yeah. take a look at this one. I know that. That's Millennium Bridge, I think, in London, isn't it? I, I guess so. Yeah. 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 It's a nice spot. If it is Millennium Bridge, which I think it is, then yeah, it's a cool spot. Um, I mean, it's a man in a hat. <laughs> We all, as street photographers, we all like to get a man in a hat. Or I mean, umbrellas, you... right? Yeah, yeah. Umbrellas, I feel like, are a bit more... Um, umbrellas are a slightly different thing because you can get more opportunity to get under them and around them. And huh. you just... there's low, when, If there's one umbrella, then you know there's going to be lots. So you can wait out a spot and you can get lots. With a hat, they're quite difficult to get. They, not everyone's wearing a cool hat like that. I mean, I like it. It's not... I feel like it needs to be straightened up a bit. Yeah, I mean, like as a standalone picture, I mean, it's all right. I don't want to be, like knock the person that's mm. taken this picture. It's a it's a cool picture. It's just a man in a hat. So <laughs> to me, it has the this like him. film vibe, like a film, yeah. not film like a movie vibe. Like this could be like a frame of a movie of like a I don't know maybe like a closing shot of a gentleman looking into the future or into the city or something like that. Yeah, I mean it's fairly it's fairly cinematic. I mean perhaps maybe if it was taken in landscape. I mean a lot of my street photos are taken or pretty much everything is always taken in landscape. Is there a particular reason for that? I think because our I feel like our field of view is mm -hmm. naturally landscape. We see things like wider. So when I capture folk photos i like to i like to be able to so whoever's looking at the photo i like to pe help them see what i'm seeing and okay. be as if i want to bring them into the photograph with me and i feel like it's harder to do with portrait because we don't we don't you know we don't have like horse blinkers on where we just see straight unless it's an image that you know has got something to see above like for instance that church image earlier if you really wanted to see the church and that was an important part of the photograph then you can take it in portrait because then you're showing how grand the space is but with this i feel like perhaps i would have liked to have seen just some negative space on the left like it doesn't have to be <clears throat> Any, anybody there but if I just saw it because that leading line is so I think that's what's actually troubling me with this image mm -hmm. if that if that um, pillar wasn't there or the, the, the I think I would have enjoyed this image more because I would have seen his hands with the gloves so it would have given me a little bit more of context of who like it would have allowed me to character build a little bit in my head I mean I would have just been able to build up a character profile looking at this picture wondering who he is but the, the barrier is quite distracting it's just right there so if the barrier is there i feel like if the camera was just turned the other way or if they had i mean i don't know what they took this with maybe a 85 or something like that but if they had a 50 if they like shooting with like telephoto um lenses with street photography i mean a 35 they might have struggled to get this depending on how close they got but you know anyway i mean if they were landscape and i just saw that leading line going down i would have known that he's on a bridge and he's walking and he's on his own and it's a little bit like mysterious and cinematic like you're saying i think i would have enjoyed the image more okay so yeah so it's not i mean yeah it's nearly there um but not quite there for me okay let's take a look at the last one so that's my photo believe it or not yeah <laughs> oh you know that <laughs> <laughs> so you want me to critique my own photo <laughs> um, all right okay all right so this so this image i mean this was a hard image to get. There was a big shard of light and mm -hmm. I only had about, I had about half an hour before my train arrived. I just finished the job um, shooting and capturing an event um, in Charing Cross in London. I had some lunch and I was like, I've missed my first train, so I've got to wait for my next one. And there was just a real st strong stream of light blasting down the, um, down the pavement. And the part that I wanted to photograph, just the, the, the right person or the right scenario wasn't, just didn't happen. And then there was a second spot but it was right outside a phone shop and there was a big A board, like an A advertising stand. So I was struggling to get the composition I wanted there. Um, <clears throat> and as well as that, I mean, because there were so many buses and cars in the background, they were quite difficult to work with because I didn't want them to be a distraction. I just wanted a shard of light to just hit, kind of just like a candid. So this girl was walking towards me and I think the thing that caught my eye was her, her jacket was 
just I mean it was quite bright and it was midwinter so it was quite cold but it was just a sunny mm. day in London so um she approached me and I remember her walking towards me and I shot 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 and then as she was moving around me I kind of just panned on the to get this shot you know I like this photo and that's why it's on in my my set I, I can't I think it's on Instagram and perhaps on our website I'm not sure mm -hmm. Um, you could probably tell me because you've grabbed it off there. But um, <laughs> I do like this photo because it feels like it's just a candid portrait and I like it and I like the light on her face and I like what she's wearing. I wish the bus in the background was not, I wish the bus wasn't there. If I could mm -hmm. if I could have waited it out, I wish the bus wasn't there. But then if the bus wasn't there, then she wouldn't have been there. I mean, mm. this is the whole point, isn't it? If I waited for somebody yeah. else to come into the frame, then they wouldn't have been the right person to the frame. So, um, I mean, I'm not, it's not the, it's not a great, street photo and somebody else might look at this and go it's just a picture of somebody walking down the street but i think my because i'm it's a big part of my photography i find that i do i really enjoy taking candid street portraits and i think if she looked i wouldn't have enjoyed this picture if she looked at me i think mm -hmm. i like the fact that she's 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 got she's got no idea that i've ever taken her picture i feel like i've taken a moment of this person and every time i look at this picture i'm wondering what she's thinking about and i think that's the thing i enjoy most about taking candid street portraiture because i mean we all do it you're walking down the road she could be thinking about a million different things is she having a good day is she having a bad day is she happy is she sad does she need a hug does she not need a hug like that sort of thing you just don't know what somebody feels like at any point in time. And these images that I capture when they're candy street portraits just remind me of the human side of the photography. Um, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you want me to say anything else about it, but that's, yeah, that's, that's no. my thoughts on it. Okay. So thank you. It was, uh, no it was nice to talk to you and, uh, some great advices. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, there's some, there were some really good photos there and I think shared a picture in that round. They're they're working hard with their street photos, and I think if people, yeah, everybody, there was no photo in there that made me go, why do they, why, why are they even bothering? Like there was, everybody there is considering their images they're taking. Some of them are brilliant, um, and some of them just need a little, a little nudge to just elevate them to to a level. I think. All right. So thank you, Tarek, for joining me today, and awesome. uh, have a great day. Thank you very much. You too. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Bye now.